Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. In Jeremiah chapter 39, we finally see the Lord uh, do exactly what He promised to do. And that is, Babylon, Babylon comes in and takes over the city of Jerusalem. And of course, it's a very sad day. It's a day that, of course, the Lord didn't want to happen. He, he would have preferred for the people to repent and turn away and turn back to Him, but it was something that he knew was going to happen, and he prophesied about it many, many times. As a matter of fact, uh, Amos prophesied about it nearly 200 years before it happened. You have Isaiah and Micah, who were contemporaries, who prophesied about it uh, over 100 years before it happened. And then, of course, Jeremiah, who we're reading today with his contemporaries, Zephaniah and Habakkuk. Uh, all of these people had prophesied and told the people through through the word of the Lord, that this destruction was going to take place. And to see it actually happen shows that the word of the Lord once again is confirmed. And it ought to be a lesson uh, to us, especially for our society today. Because previous to the destruction of Jerusalem, we find kind of an attitude that's similar to the attitude that we have in our society. Um just this this idea of um, not believing in the word of the Lord and and just thinking that well if I don't if I don't believe it's going to happen then it's not going to happen or if I I'll just listen to the people who sound good the people who uh, say the things that I want to hear and I'll follow that and if I do that then the destruction won't happen. And many people have that mindset when it comes to the judgment of the Lord and the eternal judgment that He'll place upon the souls of people. They think, well, if I don't believe in eternal destruction, then it's not going to happen. Or if I listen to this person who says that it's not going to happen, then I'll be okay. But we have to really kind of have a gut check here and and see that, you know, no matter what the people believed hundreds of years before the destruction of Jerusalem occurred, that we're reading about, it still happened. The truth of the matter was, was that God promised it, and it happened. And what a sad day it was when it actually did happen. And finally, the people realized, you know what, it didn't matter what I believed, it didn't matter what I thought, it didn't matter what I heard, it happened. And here I am dealing with the consequences of my decisions. And, and if we can just get that into our minds and, and realize that truth precedes belief, belief does not precede truth. And what I mean by that is, what we ought to be doing is searching for what is true first, and then base our beliefs upon the truth. But what our society has done is reverse it. They say, well, let me set up what I believe first, and then that is what is true. And any time that we do that, it's going to have uh, consequences attached to it. Um, you think about something simple like a fire. If a, if, a if a person doesn't believe the truth that fire is hot, and he wants to follow his belief that the fire won't hurt him, well, it doesn't matter. If he touches it, it's going to burn him. Um, if His belief does not change the truth, but the truth ought to change his belief. The truth is the fire is hot, and so his belief should be molded to that truth, and therefore he'll be saved from getting burnt. The same thing is true when it comes to what God has promised about judgment against the whole world, or upon the whole world. God's word has proclaimed it. He said it's going to happen. And it doesn't matter if it takes a thousand years, two thousand years, or ten thousand years. It's going to come about, and it's going to be a sad day when what God has promised actually comes true. And people are going to realize it didn't matter what I believed, it didn't matter what I thought and it didn't matter what I heard, here I am now having to deal with the consequences of my decisions. But before this becomes too much of a bleak uh, type of uh, devotion, there is a light in the, in the midst of all this uh, destruction and, and judgment. There's a guy by the name of Abedmelech who was an Ethiopian. And the Lord promises him that he would escape from this judgment that was going to take place and from this destruction. This is found in Jeremiah 39, starting in verse 16. 
uh, where it says, Go and speak to Eb Abedmelech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am about to bring my word on the city for disaster and not for prosperity, and they will take place before you on that day. But I will deliver you on that day, declares the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men whom you dread. For I will certainly rescue you, and you will not fall by the sword, but you will have your own life as booty, because you have trusted in me, declares the Lord. So in the midst of all this destruction, here's a man who found the grace of God. In the midst of the judgment of God, there was the grace of God shining forth, and it was placed upon this man because he trusted in the Lord. And so this is another thing that we can learn. Yes, God's judgment is sure. Yes, God's judgment is true. It's what he's prophesied. It's going to take place. But the, the beauty of it all is that we don't have to experience it. We can, be, we can actually escape the judgment and the wrath of God by placing our trust in God, by believing His Word and reacting to it in that way and shaping our beliefs upon the truth that He has revealed. And so we can have a, uh, an experience of actually uh, bliss and wonder and, and beauty on the Day of Judgment as we escape uh, the wrath of God and, and do more than just escape but actually be brought into His presence, into His glory, and to dwell with Him forever. And so, yes, this is a, a very dark uh, few chapters that we're reading today, but let's remember the light that's found in here as well. So these are just some things to think about. Hopefully they're helpful to you, maybe helpful as you try to share uh, certain things from, from the Bible with others. Um, in, in, in either case, I hope they're helpful to you. I'm, I'm glad you guys were able to listen in today. hope you guys have a great day.